Okay, so in part 10 of this series, we'll look at some conventions regarding your app's configuration settings. So before we begin, for whatever reason, YouTube deleted the first seven videos of this series last night. And so I just spent several hours re-uploading them this morning. So they are back up, and it's best to access these videos through the playlist, since some of the links are dead now. And I will include the link to the playlist in each of the video's descriptions. Okay, so back to configuration. So in general, all applications require some sort of setting specific to your setup. For example, if we look at our app.py file, we define the secret key location of our database, and we also turn the debug mode on, so we set it to true. So these settings are specific to our app in our current environment, which is our local development environment. When we deployed our app to Heroku, some of our settings didn't transfer over correctly. In fact, all of our currently defined settings need to be configured differently for Heroku. Thus, your settings change depending on your application's environment. And you can see that we've also hard-coded our configuration settings directly in the code within app.py. And you can get away with this for small applications, but the complexity of your app's config will increase with the size and scale of your app and the more environments that your app operates in. So for example, each environment requires different database connection and you'll often need to utilize different API keys, one for your live environment and another for a testing environment, depending on the service. Because of this, it's a common practice to utilize a different config file for each environment. That being said, since our app is still relatively small, we can just use one file for now. We'll set up a parent class for our default config settings, then have a separate child class for each of our environments to override the default settings when necessary. So let's get to it. So we want to start by adding a config.py file to our app's root directory. Touch config.py. And then within that file, let's go ahead and add the following code. Put a little comment here that this is the default config. Now let's go ahead and add a class and let's just call it base config. And this will inherit from objects. Now we can set class variables or attributes to define our config settings. So let's set debug mode to false and our secret key. Go ahead and leave that as my precious. And then I'll go ahead and grab the database URI from our app here. So now let's go ahead and update app.py. So I'll go ahead and put a comment here for config. Now we, will, now we can say app.config from object. We're going to import this in from our config file, and then we're going to grab that, that class. So config. And make sure that you remove debug equals true down here. Okay, so again, here we are importing our config file into the app using app.config along with the from object method. And then we are referencing the base config class. So when our app is initialized, it's configured with all the class variables from that base config class. So we can test this out. Let's go ahead and open up the shell. So now we can say from app import app. Now we can just print our configuration settings. So print app.config. And these are all our configuration settings for this environment. So you can see debug is set to false. You can see the secret key is my precious. Actually, right now it's my previous. I will change that. And then here's our database URI. So SQLite post.dv. So let me go ahead and update this to precious. 
So again, we set up our parent config settings with some default settings. Now we can define different settings for each of the environments that our app will operate in. And these classes will inherit the default settings from that parent class. So let's set up a config specific to our local development environment. We just need to add a new class to, class to this file. So class and let's call this development config. This will inherit it from our base config. So it's going to inherit all of these class attributes. And then we want to override the debug equals false because we want debug mode equal to true. So let's set debug equals to true. And then I'll go ahead and save that. Looks like probably two spaces there. There we go. So again, we are overriding the debug class variable from the parent class, which is set to false by assigning it down here and setting it to true. So let's go ahead and test this out again. First, let's go back to our app.py and change this to development config. Now, if we check our actual settings within the shell, so from app import app, and then we'll go ahead and print the config. You can see here that debug is now equal to true. Secret key is my precious. And then the database URI is the same. So this is exactly what we want. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set up our settings for our production environment, which is our live app on Heroku. So back on config.py, let's create a new class and we'll call this uh, production config. Again, this will inherit from the base config, and let's set debug equal to false. Okay, so wait a minute. So even though our default config sets debug equal to false, I added it to our production config. And I did that for two reasons. So first, I want to be absolutely certain that debug will be false in production. If we screw up somehow with inheritance and accidentally set debug equal to true, then we will expose our server to the outside world, which is obviously not good. The other reason is just for educational purposes. I want to be explicit with everything. Yes, our code is not perfectly dry since we are repeating code, but I want to err on the side of being a little less dry if it allows you to understand what's happening better. So I hope that makes sense. And if you're following along really well, you may have noticed that we have a problem. Since I hard-coded our environment class in app.py, it's development config here, how do we set this up so that Flask knows which environment it's in? And the answer to that is we use environment variables. So if you're not familiar with environment variables, I suggest doing a quick Google search. But put simply, they are, they're just key value pairs that reside in the operating environment, which make it easy to pass information in the programs, such as our Flask app. And in order for Flask to recognize these variables, you need to update how we import the config settings into our app. So we're still going to say app.config from object, but we are going to search our environment for this. And let's go ahead and search for a variable and let's set this to app underscore settings. And then we also want to go ahead and import OS as well. Now we need to actually add our local settings to the environment to create the environment variables. And to do that, Let's go to our terminal here. Let me exit out of the shell. So we want to run the following command. So export and then the name of the variable. So it's app, app underscore settings. We'll set that equal to config dot and then the name of the class, which is development config. So now if we confirm the settings from the shell, we should see that debug is true. So let's check that out. 
So let's go back to IPython from app import app, and then let's go ahead and print the config. And we can see here that debug is equal to true, which indicates that we are importing the right class for this environment. Okay, stop for a minute and take a breath or two. This can be confusing the first time you do this, so if that's the case for you, I highly recommend stopping the video at this point and then watching it again as many times as necessary. And then when you're ready, we can go ahead and move on. Okay, so we need to do one last thing before we update Heroku. We need to set up an environment variable for our database. Why? Because our local database is different from our production database on Heroku. And this is an easy update. We simply want to update our base config here so that the database URI imports the actual path and name of our database from the environment. And then we need to set that path and name as an environment variable. So do you want to try that on your own? Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so how'd it go? So did you update your config.py to search the environment for the variable? And you could have named this whatever you wanted, but database URL makes sense. And then did you add the database URL for whatever variable you used to the environment using this command, export database URL equals, and then the path and name of the database? So if not, go ahead and correct that now. And again, if you test this in the shell, we should see that the environment variable is now updated. So let's go ahead and do that. From app import app, yet again. Then let's go ahead and print our app.config. And you can see here our database URI, and it is the exact same. So we know it's correct. Cool. So let me go ahead and exit out of here. Okay, so make sure your app still runs fine, and then take some quick notes on what we did here, since in the next video, we'll be updating our config settings for our production environment on Heroku. And also just keep in mind there are a number of different ways to set up your config settings. This just so happens to be the method that I like, which is a solid choice for the relative size of our app. Another popular method is to create separate configuration files for each environment. Now whatever the method you do employ, the thing to keep in mind is that in a lot of cases you do not want your config settings in your version control. Since A, if you do have a public repo, which I do, that config file will also be in the repo. If there is sensitive information in there, which more often than not there is, then the whole world can see it. And we will fix that in this particular app in a future video. And B, if you do push one config file that has different settings for each environment, and you are not using a class structure like I am here, then each time you push to a different environment, you'll override the config.py file and establish the wrong settings for that environment. In other words, if you have two environments, let's say develop and production, and you have one config file for development and one for production, but you name the files the same, such as config.py, then if you do not keep that file out of version control, your development settings will override your production settings each time you push new code to Heroku. If that's how you want to manage your config files, then make sure to add the file name to your .gitignore file. So hopefully that didn't confuse you, but if it did, just use this method here that I'm employing with classes, and you don't have to worry about it, for now at least. Anyhow, next time we'll get our config settings set up for Heroku. Thanks again for watching.